In a living planet, survival is a complex system of workers where production, maintenance, and upkeep are essential to keep things running smoothly. Every bird, mammal, fish, and insect plays a role in the upkeep of this living planet. In this lesson, we are going to look at the different workers and the types of jobs that they do. We will see each one's importance and how their working together in harmony makes life possible. If you imagine the world as a giant garden, then let's look at its caretakers. The first component of a garden is its soil. Good soil is created in collaboration with many different entities. Ants play a big part in creating good soil by digging holes throughout the ground and bringing plant matter into the soil. The holes tunneled into the ground also help aerate the ground so rainwater can soak deep to reach the plant's roots. Earthworms and fungus furthermore help condition the soil. Burrowing mice and gophers and other rodents also assist in soil conditioning. Termites recycle dead trees back into soil by their diet of dead wood. They first attack the base of the tree, which weakens it. After the tree eventually falls to the ground, they begin to feast upon the tree until eventually it melts into the ground as soil. This will help nurture future plants and trees. Without this team of soil conditioners, plants would not get its proper nutrients they need to grow hardy and survive. For a garden to spread and grow in size across the land, you need seed spreaders. There are many variety of seed spreaders. There is the fruit and seed eating birds that will fly about dropping seeds along the way. Squirrels scatter seeds and nuts about the forest. Primates will discard seeds after eating their favorite meal. These seed spreaders help in expanding the food and vegetation across the land. The high tech job of pollinators such as bees and butterflies have a job in pollinating plants so they may bear fruit. In a good garden, you need someone to trim the trees and grass. This job is usually held by the four-legged hoofed animals such as deer, horses, and cows. They all have specially designed multi-chambered stomachs that help them process and digest harsh plant matter such as sticks, barks, leaves, grasses, and grains. These tree trimmers help make the garden well landscaped and they also spread fertilizer as they go. To keep the garden from being eaten to the ground, a good pest control system must be put into place. Predators mainly hold the job of pest control. Their job is to keep the plant eaters in the garden from overpopulating and causing destruction of the garden. Most predators instinctually prey upon herbivores for food only. This is done by natural design and is not an accident. Natural design has put in place a perfect system for keeping these tenders of the garden in balance. Predators have much smaller populations than herbivores. A lion from another pride will kill the cubs from a neighboring pride. Although this seems cruel, it's all part of nature's design to help keep the predator population in balance. If there were too many lions in a region, for example, they would wipe out their entire food source and then die off themselves. For the plant-eating insects, we have spiders, lizards, birds, and various predatory insects that help keep these populations to a minimum. Snakes are built specifically for preying on rodents and other animals that burrow in the ground. On land, you have three basic types of predators. Stage 1 super predator, stage 2 predator, and stage 3 omnivores. First we have stage 1 predator. These predators are physically built for catching and eating live prey. In the sky, stage 1 predator would most likely be in the raptor family. This includes eagles, hawks, and falcons. These birds have strong grasping talons for capturing prey and sharp beaks for tearing flesh. On land, 
we find the cat family as our stage one predator. They are built specifically for capturing and eating prey. With sharp, retractable claws and razor-sharp teeth, they are the best equipped land animals for hunting down prey. In the ocean, a shark would be considered a stage one predator. Stage two predators are predators that are not as fully equipped as stage one predators. They mainly feed on slow, old to weak prey or dead carcasses. In the sky, a buzzard would be a good example for a stage two predator. They don't have sharp gripping talons like that of a raptor, but they are attracted to the smell of dead carcasses, kind of like the cleanup crew for the pest control. On land, the canine family would be a good example of a stage two predator. It doesn't have the claws like that of a cat for grasping into flesh, so it relies more on speed or numbers to catch prey. They tend to pick older, weaker, even dead animals for their meal. They too are like the cleanup crew for pest control. In the ocean, a dolphin might fit into this category as well. The third stage predator of pest control would be that of the omnivore. An omnivore has the same physical makeup of that of a stage two predator, but will also eat plants and fruit. A bear would be a good example for a omnivore. There is an identical version of all of these tenders of the garden found in lakes or in oceans, with similar creatures that have identical jaw, also a microscopic version in microbes and in bacteria that partake in the same type of upkeep. Man over the years has tried to play the part of predator and has disrupted the natural design of the garden. Soon after the Grand Canyon was declared a national park, a government commission put a bounty on predators in the Kibbab Forest Plateau above the Grand Canyon. In a 25 year span alone, the government killed nearly 5,000 coyotes, 800 mountain lions, and 550 bobcats not to mention the thousands of others killed by professional and private hunters. This led to the overpopulation of mule deer in the region. They devoured most of the low-lying vegetation which created massive erosion and floods in the region. And eventually, after the deer had eaten all of the reachable vegetation, the entire forest deer population died. Up to 40,000 died in one year alone. In the mid-1800s, the Central Plains bison population used to stand at almost a billion. In just a few decades, within the mid to late 1800s, the hunting and slaughtering of bison for skins had reduced the population to just a few hundred. At the time, the bison grazed and fertilized the Central Plains into lush green grasslands. Within 40 years of the buffalo's annihilation, many parts of the Central Plains slowly died off due to lack of nutrients created by the buffalo. This caused massive erosion, which affected moisture in the air, which in turn reduced rainfall and eventually created the era of the Dust Bowls. People of an island near Australia made a bounty on pesky feral cats. They eventually removed the island's entire population. Within a few years, the island was overrun by an infestation of mice and rats, which had no predators left to stop them. Natural design already has a time-tested system in place. It's tenders of the garden. Over the years, man has been extremely careless in his approach, treatment, and management of this complex ecosystem. In doing so, we have wiped out many species of animals, killed off soil with chemicals. We've even stripped entire ecosystems from the ocean floor. We must learn to work with and respect the delicate balance that has been working for billions of years without our help. We must also be aware of the fact that each species of animal, insect, bird, or fish has a purpose and a job to do. The tenders of the garden are linked together as in the chain of life. There is great importance to each link, that even if one link is removed, it can break apart the system that other animals, including man, rely on for survival.